Guys, how are we gonna save the tuna? I know who might know. Dracula. Or Edward Cullen. I'll explain on today's BFD. Do you know what the tragedy of the commons is? It's an economic theory that explains why people are so bad at sustainability when it comes to using common resources. It's relevant to fisheries, air quality, and buffalo hunting, among other things, and it's a serious problem that everyone should know about. So for those of you who aren't avid readers of Freakonomics, we've got a fun way to make the tragedy of the commons a little bit more accessible by putting it in terms of vampires. So with us today is economics professor, television writer, and co-editor of the upcoming book, The Economics of the Undead. His name's Glenn Whitman, and he's here to tell us about the tragedy of the blood commons. Glenn, thank you so much for joining us. It's really great to be here. Tell us about the tragedy of the blood commons as you describe it in your book. The tragedy of the commons starts with a situation where you have what's called a commons, also known as an open access resource. It's a resource that multiple people have access to and they can harvest it or use it and none of them can be excluded from using it and in that situation uh, there tends to be a very poor incentive for individuals to conserve the resource instead there's an incentive for them to use it while they can to get as much as they can before others get it why did you choose to use the undead as a teaching tool well, the idea first came to me when I saw the movie Daybreakers. The premise is that in the future, vampires have consumed the human population almost to extinction. Say you have two vampire clans, Matador and Slaughter, feeding from the same human population. Each clan can either drain a bunch of humans now or they can abstain and wait for later. If both clans chose to abstain, the human population would grow larger, allowing both clans to get more humans in the future than they would get now. But for each clan on its own, it makes sense to drain now. Suppose you're the Matador clan and you choose to abstain. You get no humans while Slaughter does. Then the human population grows a little larger, but you have to share the benefits with slaughter. You would have been better off draining instead of abstaining. The same goes for the other clan. And as a result, both clans overfeed. So what are some ways we're looking to solve this problem? There are actually multiple possible solutions, but historically okay. the solution is privatization. The American bison was an open access resource. Everybody could kill them for their fur or even just for sport. Eventually, after the invention of barbed wire, we were able to uh, slice up the American West. Now people privately raise buffalo, and the result of that is now you can buy a bison burger if right. you want at many restaurants. It's not very easy to fence off the oceans, and so mm -hmm. that makes it much more difficult to adopt the privatization solution in the case of fish. The management of animal populations is mm -hmm. also about encouraging their growth. Unfortunately, there's not much incentive to do that. It might be good for fish populations if they started stocking the ocean with some kind of fish food, but fishermen would only get a tiny part of the benefit, and then right. the rest of the benefit goes to all the other fishermen. Vampires could conceivably be doing things that would actually be encouraging human fertility in some way, um, perhaps by appearing in the likes of Twilight novels. And so forth. <laughs> yeah. They don't have an incentive to do that at, at present because they'll be benefiting all the other vampires while incurring the costs and embarrassment for themselves. <laughs> Now some countries are establishing fisheries around their islands in the hands of fishermen who own tradable quotas. It ends up being a collective decision about the total, but an individual decision about how many of these quotas or vouchers you're going to buy. Do you think that conservationists should be studying economics? I think probably a lot of them have taken economics classes. Okay. There may be a kind of ideological resistance. It's necessary to take off the blinders on that. If we can find institutional solutions such as private property and markets, those can turn out to be the solution instead of the problem. Any last words of wisdom? Watch what you bite. While problems with vampire-related blood commons are a long way off, or you know, not possible because they're fictional, the problems with tuna-related commons are already here and very, very real. Check out the links below for more information on Glenn's book and to take action by pledging to only eat sustainable fish. For BFD, I'm Marisha Ray, and don't forget to subscribe.